What's up, Brian Tong here, and it's official. Sony's next game console will be called the PlayStation 5, and you know what? They've narrowed down the release to the holiday season of 2020. Now, Sony just dropped another boatload of information for their next-gen console exclusively to Wired, so you can watch my previous video that really just dives into the first batch of PlayStation 5 details from Sony when they talked about it back in April. But let's just get to the new stuff. The biggest reveal is obviously the official PlayStation 5 name, keeping it classic and its official holiday 2020 launch. But Wired also got their hands on a prototype of the next-gen controller. There are no pictures of it, but it's described as looking an awful lot like the PS4's DualShock. And you know what? That's a good thing. Now, they noticed there's a little hole on it that connects to a recently published patent that points to Sony working on a voice-driven AI assistant for the PlayStation. But system architect Mark Cerny says, we'll talk more about it another time. Now, the controller doesn't have a name yet, but if they're keeping it classic, our best bet is that it will end up being called the DualShock 5 because that makes sense. Now, new features coming to it. The new controller will have what they call adaptive triggers that will offer varying levels of resistance so that shooting a bow and arrow feels like the real thing and there'll be this tension and resistance as you pull the arrow back while you're hitting the triggers or they make a machine gun feel different from a shotgun when you make contact with this area. Now, this is a DualShock 4, obviously, but the 5 is going to be a lot like this 4. The biggest addition has to be its new haptic feedback that will be a lot more advanced than the current rumble motor we're used to with what's described as highly programmable voice coil actuators located in the left and right grips of the controller according to Wired. Now the speaker in the controller has also been improved and when you combine it with the new haptic system while playing a game demo of Astrobot Rescue Mission, running around on different surfaces gave off a different tactile experience for Wired. They described that the sand feels slow as if you're trudging through it Jumping into water gave the feeling of resistance, and then a wooden bridge gave off a bouncy sensation thanks to the new Haptics engine. They also checked out a Gran Turismo Sport demo where you could feel the difference between driving on the border between the dirt and the track where both sides felt different from one another. Now, feedback from Sony user tests found that the current rumble system was too tiring to use continuously, so they released a version of GT Sport that didn't use it, and that could be different when they bring the new Haptics in the fold. Now, according to the Wired report, the controller team has been working on haptic feedback since the DualShock 4. They could have even paired it with the PS4 Pro during its mid-cycle refresh, but the feature was held off until the next gen, so there wouldn't be what Sony called like a split experience between gamers on the PS4 versus the Pro. Now, the new controller will use a USB Type-C connector for charging. You'll be able to game while it's connected to its cable as well. The controller will be heavier because of its larger capacity battery and then this new haptic motors we talked about versus the DualShock 4, but it will still be lighter than an Xbox One controller with batteries in it. Now, Sony also revealed more details about its solid state drive that will turn loading games into just a few seconds. Remember, Sony previously run Spider-Man for the PS4 on a PS5 dev kit demo to show off the improved load times. Jumping from one of Spider-Man's in-game environments to another went from 15 seconds on a PS4 Pro to 0.8 seconds on the PS5 dev kit with an SSD. That's less than one freaking second. Now, since previous PlayStation hard drives, you know, they're spinning drives, they have to seek out the right assets to load, even if it's milliseconds, it all kind of adds up and developers have often duplicated certain game assets so the old drives could find them faster. Think of mundane things like lamp posts or non-playable characters just passing by. Now, Marvel Spider-Man game has some pieces of data duplicated 400 times on the hard drive to find them faster. So not only does an SSD have a faster raw speed than a hard drive, it can save crucial space and developers may be able to use that to bring in more assets for maybe a more detailed world or even shrink the size of game patches. Yes. Now physical PS5 games will still use 100 gig optical discs that will go into the optical drive that also doubles as a 4K Blu-ray player. That's right, we're finally getting a 4K Blu-ray player in the PS5, but there's no word if Dolby Vision will be coming along with it. You know me, that's kind of a big thing for me as well. Installing games will also be approached differently with the PS5 thanks to the new SSD. They're going to allow users a finer grained level of access to data, meaning that you could just install a game's multiplayer campaign, leaving single for another time. Or let's say, what if you finish an entire game and you could just delete the single player campaign once it's completed? This would have been great for me, right, with my games from the Uncharted series when I just ended up playing multiplayer all the time, but I still had to keep the entire game. Now, the new PS5 UI was not shown off to Wired, but since the games will boot up so fast, they will be including joinable activities from their multiplayer servers. So 
at any time. You can take a look at what missions you can do in a game, um, see the rewards for completing them, or even multiplayer matches available. You can just find them, jump into them at any time within the new UI. Now the PS5 will use an AMD CPU from their Ryzen line and a GPU chip from its Navi family. In my other PlayStation 5 video, we really broke down the next gen ray tracing feature that's coming to the PS5 to bring really more complex and specific lighting and sound effects in 3D environments. Now Cerny wanted to make it clear for readers that ray tracing graphics rendering on the PS5 will not be software based and there's actually ray tracing acceleration in the GPU hardware. Some studios already have their PS5 dev kits, the controller prototypes they've been rolling out to them recently, but no studios have named any specific PS5 titles that they're working on just yet. So that's pretty much everything that Sony has revealed for the new PlayStation 5. It's set for launch and holiday of 2020. You can go back and check my other video to get more details of everything that's coming. And you know what? We're gonna keep on learning a whole lot more before then. Now, if you like this video, put those thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell Ding! to get all my videos when they drop. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, everybody. Be safe, and I'll talk to you soon. See you.